Hi, I'm Ed Wright, CEO of Wright Mowers, and today we're going to do a breakdown and comparison between these two engines. We've been offering the Evo engine now for a while. Kawasaki's had it on the market for about three years, but there really isn't a lot of information about what this engine is, um, its legacy, or where it came from. And I'm going to uh, do a teardown on the engine, show you the features that are inside of it, and also compare it to the 850, which is a similar engine that Kawasaki builds. So first off, the 850 is a tried and true engine. It's been out for many years. It's well loved, uh, great engine. It's offered in carbureted and EFI versions. And my take on it when I look at the engine is that what Kawasaki did is they copied and pasted the CAD files um, over here, and then they made changes to this engine to increase the performance and the efficiency and longevity and serviceability of the engine. Um, now, but the confusing thing is that this is a bigger number 850 than this 820, but the reality is you can see the engine is bigger, produces a lot more horsepower, 34 and a half horsepower, and here I have the two torque curves for the engine. So here on the 850, you can see that our peak torque on this engine's uh, just under 40 horsepower, whereas the peak torque over here is just over uh, 50 foot-pounds uh, of torque. Um, so this engine produces a ton more torque. Now, the displacement of the engines is a little bit different. Um, this engine has pretty much the same stroke, but the bore is about one and a half millimeters smaller. So it's a very small difference in terms of displacement on these two engines. Um, the other big difference here is that this engine was designed to only be EFI. There isn't a mechanical governor option for this engine. There isn't a carburetor available for it. So it's optimized for EFI. That means that the, where the intake sits is more efficient as a three valve engine, so the engine breathes better, which increases the fuel efficiency, and because it can draw in more air with that uh, three valve setup, the engine can produce more power. Um, and so uh, we're gonna tear this down here in just a second. Let's go ahead and take this one off the table. Before we tear it down, I'm gonna do a walk around of the engine and what the out exterior features are. So first off, around this side, They've changed their dipstick. If, you, if you're familiar with Kawasaki's normal dipsticks, um, they're threaded in, and there's sometimes confusion as to do I thread it in or not in order to check the level. But here, it's a quarter turn with a good O-ring on there, so it's very easy. Also, this filler is a lot bigger, so you can change the oil much more quickly. Um, pretty much similar situation with the oil filter and oil filter position. <clears throat> the um, Cylinder head housings are separate from the main housing, so you can remove them individually. The um, valve cover here, behind the valve cover, there's three valves, which is what's giving us that efficiency. Here on the front, right behind this cover, we have the fuel pump for the EFI system. It's pretty easy to get to. Here we have the EFI main module, and it, again, it's very easy to take off this machine, on and off. Um, the harness, is external to the engine, so it's much easier to get to the harness without having to take the main housing off. Here we have the fuse box. Again, we've got the other housing. We've got the uh, voltage regulator and the starter. I'm gonna start, uh, one other thing on the outside, you'll see this more when we get underneath it, is there's a four bolt attachment on this engine. Sorry, this engine's a little bit dirty because it was a field test engine. All right, so I take this cover off, there's two bolts that hold it on, and you can see immediately here, it's much, much easier to service. If I want to replace this coil, it's as easy as this. Now, in contrast, a lot of our um, industry, they put the coils underneath the main rotating housing, so you have to take off the rotating screen, the entire housing, a ton of accessories in order to get to the coil. Now, once we've taken this cover off and the coil off, you can see the intake manifold and the fuel injector go, going in the top of the head. This is much different than most of these engines where the, the manifold goes in the side of the head. Um, the other thing we can see here a little bit better now, there's no governor mechanism on this engine because it's fully EFI, electrically governed. And uh, we've got a beefier uh, muffler mounting point here than some of the other engines. All right. Uh, give me a minute and we'll dig a little bit deeper into this engine. All right, so we've removed a couple more exterior parts. We took off the other shroud, that's two bolts. We took off the other coil, again with two bolts. We took off the fuel pump 
uh, cover, which was two bolts. And I've loosened the air cleaner here. This is the standard air cleaner um, that Kawasaki uses, uh, but we use a different, we use a different rain cap. Um, what we do here, if you can see, is there's these little uh, flutes underneath the rain cap and this thing in here spins. And what it does is it causes all the grit and whatnot to sling out of this little slot right here, centrifugal force. And um, it's very good for fines, like dense fines like sand or, or um, mineral type dust. Or if you wanted to fool around with it, you could put a handful of grass seed in here and it all comes shooting out of the slot. As compared to the stock cap here, which effectively keeps the rain out, but we buy these because um, for the bigger engines, it reduces your operating cost. We can put something like this on there for, um, let's say 20, 30 bucks, but over the life of the mower, you'll save about probably around $200 in air filter and air filter changes. Also, it's heavy duty, so it's more likely to withstand the impact of a tree branch than the stock cap. All right, back to the engine. You can see here, the clean out ports, very easy to get in there. You can see the top of the cylinder head. And unlike most engines, these housings over the cylinders are not part of the, the main housing. They're separate. And so it's much easier to access the whole intake <clears throat> and EFI system without having to get to the back housing. So all right, from there, we'll dig in deeper. Before I get much deeper in here, I wanna highlight this one little part. So this air cleaner bracket here, it's mounted on little rubber isolators, which is super nice. But if you've had issues with hitting the air cleaner on something and it damaging the rubber isolators, then what you need is this duck foot. We put it on all the uh, Evo engines that we ship out and uh, it looks like a duck foot and it bolts on right here. And what it does is it keeps this bracket from moving very far if it were to hit its limits. And uh, you can find the part number in our parts system by just searching duck foot. All right, so we've taken off the air cleaner, all the upper portions. Here you can see the EFI module. These EFI modules nowadays are uh, very reliable. There's a servo actuator in the side of here. And there's a little computer in there that does all the fuel mapping and controls. Um, this is an updated version of Kawasaki's unit, uh, but pretty much does the exact same thing. Here you can see with the front of the engine taken off, you can see the fins and the cooling. And from here, we're gonna dig deeper and take off the manifold. All right, so we've removed the main housing from the engine, pulled back the oil cooler, pulled down the starter. Here we can take off the intake manifold. Sorry, we're dealing with a dirty engine here. This is a test engine that wasn't maintained, but you can see you know, the type of cooling that we get in here. The layout of this is all very, very similar to the FX850, but when you get into the head and up is where it all changes. You can see the port here is on the top instead of in the valley. And uh, from here, we're gonna dig into the head and show you some of what makes this engine unique and different. All right, this is where things become different. You can see already we got two intake valves and one exhaust valve. And this makes a big difference in the fuel efficiency. All right, so here we have the combustion chamber. You can see we have the intake, two intake valves, and the exhaust valve going out the exhaust port. Here the cylinder, pretty typical cylinder, metal, head gasket. But what's going, what happens here is that if you bring the air in the side of the engine, on this side, you've got one valve and it has to turn 90 degrees on its way out of the exhaust port, the engine's not gonna be is efficient. There's going to be more air resistance. Air doesn't flow into the end, into the combustion chamber as much effectively reducing the cylinder pressure and the power and torque that you get from it. But when the air comes in the top, and you've got two smaller valves, you get more flow through here. So you get more air for that combustion. And then you got a single exhaust. You know, some automotive engines, you'll have four valves in here. But uh, for this point, a lawnmower is not worth it. Um, the other thing is you might say, well, in other valves, just another thing to break. But usually the reality is, is that valves that are a little bit smaller tend to be prone to less issues. And so two smaller valves uh, really are not that big of a concern. Plenty of cooling on the head. And here you can see uh, they've got the uh, valve adjustment here. So there, 
it's a high quality style, commercial style uh, valve train here. So uh, proven, this has been on other engines for a long time. What we're talking about here isn't new to Karosaki. Um, it's just new to this particular engine block. Um, so the fuel efficiency that you get with this setup, uh, it's obviously going to vary a lot depending on what you're doing with the engine. But ballpark wise, it's probably about 10% more efficient than um, a typical EFI engine. So a typical EFI engine, we've done some benchmarking on that and uh, they seem to be about 20% less fuel consumption. So if this is another 10% less, um, in some cases you could see up to about a third less fuel. And in the long run, that's a lot of fuel over the life of the, this mower and um, something to account for. So that's the, uh, the main outside of the engine here. The, the flywheel setup is very similar to an FX850. And uh, so from here, we're gonna dig inside the engine. All right, we've torn into the sump of the engine so you can get a sense of what's going on inside. Again, very similar mechanicals to an 850. You can see the valve train here. Maybe duty, duty cam, compression release mechanism. Here, this is the little balls there, those uh, activate the compression release. But all heavy duty cam, crankshaft, very similar to what you have in 850, just with about a millimeter or so smaller bore. And the breather up here is again, pretty standard setup. Now, if you were to look at 850 sump and this sump, they would look almost identical from the above position. But if you look at these here, all these fins are taller. And um, also there's a change that happens in here. Uh, this sump here is uh, 2.6 quart dry, whereas most of these engines are two quarts. So a little bit of oil goes a long way, uh, whether it comes down to forgetting to check your oil before topping it up, or just uh, the oil being cleaner by the time you get to the oil change interval. Same style oil pump. And then this is part of it, the engine that I think is super important to me, is you can see here, we've got your standard threaded holes like you'd have on an engine since the 1940s. But what they've done here is they've extended this out and now we have a through hole, so you can see through it. The great thing about a through hole is that if you have a heavy duty commercial application where the engine sees a lot of shock and load, especially on a stand on mower where the engine's riding with the cutter deck, we want a through bolt here. You can't strip out the aluminum, it's clamped in forever. On a lighter duty application, you can just use the inner four holes. We use all eight and um, it's important to us on uh, some of the stand on mowers that we make. So that's a roundup on the uh, Evo engine, it's more powerful, more efficient, easier to service, easier to get at, a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna have to make your own decision about the engine choice that you like. I'd obviously uh, take your dealer's advice very seriously, because uh, they're gonna have the most current information around support, service, parts, um, and any particular things going on with the engine or an engine in a particular application. Uh, but what I wanna do here is give you a sense of what is this Evo engine, what is the makeup, what makes it different than a FX850 here? <clears throat> it's basically the same engine, but it's EFI only with um, higher performance heads on it and uh, cooling enhancements. So hopefully that's helpful to you as you look at uh, your engine choices this upcoming spring.